Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Explorer, we're going to take a look at Zim Squiggle. Ooh, how exciting. Well, let's see what a squiggle looks like. We will go to zimjazz.com slash squiggle. And here they are, so a bunch of different ones. And what I'd like to do is try animating it so to make uh, this, this is called a control, and there's the circle and the control and a handle. It will make this control animate down, and this control animate up, and this control animate down, etc., and that one up, and we'll make it go back and forth. Now, if we wanted random back and forth, we would use Zim Wiggle, but if we want just a consistent loop, then we may as well use Zim Animate. And finally, that one go back as well. You can animate other things. You can animate, say, the rotation of this thing so that it would end up animating something like that. Um, this is very much like the blob. We've animated blobs for light shows, to, and, and we're animating the Bezier points as well. But it can be a little bit tricky to animate the Bezier points, so I thought I would explore that with you. Well, let's do it! Uh, have a look at the documentation. Uh, zimjazz.com and then go to the docs and then type in the word squiggle up here and you'll arrive here. So when we make a squiggle we pass in a color, the thickness of the line, and the points. Now if we just pass in a color it'll make a squiggle much like what we've seen and that's great if you if you know what the points where they will be you can pass the points in here but to animate the points we don't use the parameters to animate the points we come on down and either use a property or a method possibly so here's some methods where we can record points set points so that may do it is there a property yeah, here's a property the points property for instance gets or sets the points array of the squiggle in the same format as the points parameter. Now that's with an X and a Y for all of these things. The control is the whole thing. The circle is the circle within the control. The, rec the rectangles are the rectangles. Uh, but when we animate, we usually want to animate an object so we can actually animate the control container. And that would be what we want to do. And if we want to get those, then we ask for the point objects array. And there it is. So this will, the points object array at zero will be this one. And it will give us access to the control container itself, the circle, and the rectangles. And then the points objects at one would give us access to the second control circle, etc. So we're going to animate each of these, the controls, up and down. <clears throat> All right, let's do it. So. Uh, how about some code? Yay! Code, 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 code. Let's just reduce that. Hey, there's some code. So here's the code for that squiggle example with the different squiggles, and we're just putting in different numbers of squiggles there, along with different colors. We've added them to the transform manager as well, so that they'll persist if we set the persist, and if we don't clear the persist. <laughs> All right, so back uh, back here now, though, we are starting a Zim Explorer page. This is a new document now based on the fit template here. The fit template. We've removed the circle that was in there, and we're about to put in a squiggle. Var new scope. Var squiggle. Oh, it's early in the morning. Actually not. New squiggle. It's early for my fingers. I haven't been typing much yet. <clears throat> All right. So a new squiggle. And let's just center that on the stage. Dot center. And see what that looks like when we view it in a browser. Open in a browser. There she be. Hey, that's actually the default squiggle that we'll be wanting to use. That looks fine. So we want this to move down, that one to move up. And now let's um, let's try out, uh, see if we can access these control points. So how about we say squiggle dot, what was it again? Point controls, point, yeah, can't remember, point objects, I think it was. Yes, point objects at zero, so this is the first one, 
and at zero would give us uh, sometimes what helps if if you can't keep that in mind uh, let's go back to was it? this one right here the documentation <clears throat> and we can just copy this point objects oh and it was point objects as well point objects yep Got it. so here's what that's going to look like it's going to be an array and the first one Here's that, and then we have another one here, etc. And as many as we have, six of them or something like that, five. So control uh, is the first, uh, the whole thing there, that thing is the first one. Control is the first one of, of that array. So that would be the circle, this would be the rect, so we want zero, zero. That gives us the control point itself, and let's change its rotation. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> uh, wrote. Uh, how about, what was it? It was pointing off to the right. I can't remember what that would be. Why don't we go 180? That will definitely be different. Now, I think we might not even see a change here, though. So let's pop on back here to the squiggle and refresh. Oh, I do see a change, sort of, uh, but it looks broken. And that's because we need to actually update the squiggle. Uh, so it's done its rotation, I suppose, but it didn't update the actual shape of the squiggle and, and other things like that. So anytime you manually change uh, points through the array, you've got to go squiggle dot update. Like that. There we go. All right, now let's take a look at that refresh and there we go so what that's done is it's just moved it from here which is zero uh, usually rotation is zero relative to the positive uh, x directly direct uh, what's it called axis and then it's that's 90 and this is 180 that's negative 90 or 270 and then right back to 360 so we've rotated it that far. Now if we wanted to say make that longer then we could just change the length of uh, or change the um, position of, of this guy. Now the position of that guy we have to be careful this is the rectangle is relative to the container and if we've just rotated the container of, of these controls um, we don't uh, we could just it used to be like this this is when we haven't rotated so if we just move this, uh, say, 100, so we move it relative 100, it's going to move like that, but it's all rotated, so it ended up moving like that. So in other words, we're, we're not sitting like this and saying, please now move that 100, uh, or sorry, minus 100. Um, it looks like sitting on this side, if we moved it 100, it would do that, but no, it's because it's rotated, so you just have to watch that. Um, the positions of the things inside the container are relative to inside the container. Not, it doesn't know if the container has been rotated. All right, so we are wanting to not rotate it, though. <clears throat> and if we wanted to animate that, though, uh, shall we just see what that looks like animated? That's a nice, simple example. So we go dot animate, and then we can use the squigglies and say rotation colon... 180. So please now animate to that rotation in say one second. All right, let's see what that looks like. Uh, do you see what the problem is going to be? We're animating that, but we're only updating the squiggle once. So we're going to see it be broken again. Refresh. There it goes. So it the container and the container, but not the sticks. The container animated, but the uh, the squiggle itself did not. So we have a couple choices. One would be on the object, on any object that we put an animate on, we get an animate event or an animation event. Sorry. So we could just copy all that. Too much fun, is it? Uh, dot on animation. If if we know we're doing this for one thousand milliseconds, we could 
uh, I don't know what the best way to, to do that was. What we're trying to do is run the squiggle update in, we could run it in a ticker and, and in the end that's what we're going to do if we're if we're animating squiggles and we continue to animate the squiggle then we'll just throw this in a ticker so that would be something like uh, ticker dot add a function and then it's a no-brainer really no brainer we just update the squiggle inside of the ticker so that always upstate updates it and that would work just fine should we see that yeah uh, before I do what I was about to do let's just see that the squiggle updating in the ticker uh, will then make this work as we expect okay refresh that again there it goes around sorry if that's small on your screen it very well might be Ooh, it's because our stick isn't very long either so if we had a longer stick it would be more uh, be more cool so that's the idea. We are, we're now rotating that and we're just running that in here. But if all we wanted to do was one rotation and that's it, then we don't want to be stuck animating, updating the squiggle and updating the stage and the, and the ticker the whole time because we really only needed it to be updated while it was animating. So that then becomes the point as to what we were about to do there. And that is when this animation is going, we get an event saying that it's going. So we can just update the squiggle in that event, like so. Oh, thank you for connecting. Okay, so we are rotating it, but we need to update it while this thing is being rotated. So let's save that and check it out, see if it works. It does not missing around bracket somewhere. Where are we missing around bracket? Oh, oh comma is actually missing. Save that. And try her again here. Whoop. Refresh. F11. Oh, not F11. F12. What exploration? Missing a colon after a property ID. Uh, colon. Did it give me a line? You guys see a missing colon? Uh, there's a line there. In on 55, missing a colon after property ID on line 55, squiggle dot update colon. Oh, I'm <laughs> missing a function. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Okay, so um, yeah, I, I've been half using arrow functions and half not using arrow functions now, and it's starting to mess me up. Uh, so um, the arrow function e, e, ES6 is, is this, where where you do you do need things still here, but uh, like I said, I'm kind of half <laughs> using these and half not. So I ended up leaving it like that. Function. Well, that was a f oh and round brackets. Why we would have why it said it needed a colon, semicolon. Yeah, maybe did it say a colon or a semicolon? Missing a colon. Weird. Okay, refresh. Hey, <laughs> that didn't work anyway. So are we not getting this uh, animation uh, thing? Let's let's try it again. So here, here we are exploring. To tell you the truth, I've actually never used animation. I remember putting it in because. Uh, one of our users wanted it. Hey, Frank. Uh, let's. Uh, so if it doesn't work, then we zog. So zog here. How embarrassing! <laughs> and that will tell us if that you know what what the problem is. We refresh. I don't see any here's at all. So it's like that's not being captured. Uh, let's take a look at the documentation on that. Doop, doop. Documentation on animate. All right. So animate down at the bottom then are events. See, animate's not on an object. So events zim animate will add an animation event to the target. Oh, if the events parameter is set to true. Okay. So that explains it. See what fun this exploring is. 
when it was proposed to us to have this event, it was sort of like, oh, really? Okay, I've never, I've never had to use it. This is the first time I've actually used this. So it does appear to be useful. That's great. But I didn't want every animation to be uh, capturing this animation or sending out, d dispatching this animate or animation animation event so you have to actually say in the animation please turn on the event so i think that was events colon true and events colon true because we added it later that means we'd have to do a lot of comma null comma null and i mean a lot of them probably something like 20 nulls and then finally get to it so obviously that's no good so it's, instead of going that route we do the zim duo technique so we just select the ones that we already have there, put them in squiggly brackets, drop them down, and give them the parameter names. Time and what was the next one was events colon true. So that means please add an event to the object. So we save that and we try again. Woohoo! Explore, squiggle, and refresh. Hey, there we go. Good. And note that our here is happening 71 times. See, any, every time we animate, stuff's happening. Like, go, 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 go. It's sort of like rather not have to do that if we really didn't need to capture that. So a little snag there. Uh, but once again, this is only if uh, we're only doing this uh, right here, the uh, animation event. If we were just doing a short animation of a squiggle or a blob, but if you're doing some sort of visualization that's constantly animating and all always animating, that's going to animate forever, uh, then we can just put it in a ticker. So we'll comment that out. <clears throat> so and bring back the ticker. Bring back the ticker. And even if it's a long animation that eventually ends, I suppose you know how to stop a ticker, right? Uh, that that would be another route we could go. We could have the ticker be here, and we could say, "All right, well, don't worry about events now." Comment that out too. It's nice when we when we put things on multiple lines, we can comment them out and uh, just continue on if we want uh, with something else. How about we'll call something? We'll call colon a this function right here function when the animation finishes, at that point we can turn off the ticker as long as we save our ticker is equal to. So we put the results of this ticker.add, because this is adding this function to the ticker. We put the results into a variable ticker, then we can just say ticker.remove, ticker.remove ticker, like so. And we use the ID there. So as it is standing now, uh, we're going to animate and right away we're running a ticker, but when the animation is finished, we're going to call the function that removes our ticker from the ticker list. So how can we tell? We could put a little zog in here, zog ticking like that. And let's try it right. So we refresh lots of tickings and look it stopped so we had 56 tickings and then the ticker stopped i think that probably adding the event would be would be better if you need to uh, do something as well as animate while it's animating then you would have the event <coughs> that that's being called Okay, so let's see what were we update uh, what we're doing. We'll update the squiggle constantly. We're not going to put an event on it. We won't bother calling anything when it's done. As a matter of fact, we're we're not going to make it done because we're going to we're going to loop this thing. And we don't want to really animate the rotation either. We want to animate the y position of it. Now uh, how high are those things? Do we know? Because we want to animate that so that it goes up and down. So we want this one to animate to where this one is. <laughs> nice little boat or something. Hey, you get get back. Uh, ah, my clickies are off. Uh, by the way, on mobile, the, these things are small. 
when you've got a lot of stuff going on, you often want smaller handles so that they don't cross one another, get in the way and stuff. But if you want bigger handles it's pretty easy on the ticker to make all these things bigger and indeed in mobile it defaults to be twice as big by the way so there's less missing of these things the problem is when you miss it, it <laughs> uh, i missed and it turns it off so we've got a squiggle we're wanting to animate it but we need to know how high that squiggle is and i don't know i can't remember because we're exploring uh if there's even a parameter for the height of that Maybe, maybe not. It's some sort of default height. Call parameter. Oh, this is animate now. We want squiggle. So color, thickness, points, length. That's the length of it. Control length, control type, uh, handle size, toggle, move, control click. So it doesn't look like there is a parameter to sort of say, by default, start this high. I just, uh, just chose something. Does it even say what was chosen? <laughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe we didn't even say uh, how high that was. Um, so we could ask for the height, I suppose, of the squiggle, as, as long as that makes sense. Shall we Shall we just test? Uh, zog squiggle dot height. In theory, that should be... Like if this turns out to be 100, or it's probably a, some sort of default amount there. Uh, okay, uh, there's a squiggle and refresh 60. Yeah, that sounds about right. So it's uh, 60 high. It is a shape like blob, like circle, like rectangle, triangle, and they all have width and height and that's provided for us. <laughs> by Zim, I might add, as opposed to CreateJS, which is all this, uh, all, all of what it, this is built on CreateJS, but they don't work with width and height properties. They only have scales. So we sort of painstakingly added a width and height. Oh, they, they have bounds as well. So you could ask for the bounds possibly and then get the bounds height and width. But we move those as to, to into properties on the objects. Okay, so... The Y then we will want to be 60, not just 60 like this, because that uh, may or may not work. I suppose we can, here, let me just comment that out for a second. And uh, we will dot outline. See how outline comes in handy? I just, uh, I can't remember exactly what's going to happen. Where, where, if I animate the control, where is the control in the squiggle? Uh, that kind of thing. So let's just visualize that. Yeah, it'd probably be all right. This very first one, as you can see, this cross right here is zero, zero inside the squiggle. The control is presumably inside the squiggle. I think it is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And therefore, if we animated it 60 in the Y, it should just go from here to there. So I think that'd be all right. And we'll animate this one minus 60. If we did want to make sure, and we're just animating it 60, oh wait, we do have to watch that. Okay, because uh, we don't want to animate this one minus 60, we want to animate it to zero. But we could do that. We could say, hey, just go 60 more, or go minus 60 more, 60 more, minus 60 more. That's relative motion to animate. And so let's bring this back. If we wanted to animate relative motion, a 60 would work, but so would relative motion of 60. Uh, and then the next one would be a relative motion of minus 60. Right, so we've got a choice. We can, we can animate it to an absolute position of 60 within the container, in which case the second one would be zero. Yeah, let's do this. I, usually, if, if I can do it absolute, I'll probably do it absolute. That's what most of us are used to, an absolute position for animation. But there is relative by putting quotes, by the way. All right, so we're going to do 60 on this one. And in a time of one second. And uh, is that good, good enough for a test? Yeah, let's test it. Test. Cool. Did you see that? Boom. And then we'll animate this one, minus 60. So, oh, we'll want to loop that as well. And we want to get rid of the outlines. So get rid of the outline. 
and oh, we want to rewind it as well. Rewind, although the order of this doesn't matter. Uh, rewind true. <laughs> try. <laughs> Jesus, really trying to try. Rewind true and loop colon true. There we go. So let's just check this first one before we move on. Okay, that looks good. And then the, the next one in will be the opposite. So I can already see that we may want to run something more automatically here rather than specify each one of these things. Be like that. Uh, if we've got six of them, we could loop through however many we have, and then we can apply some sort of way to alternate which way we're going. Uh, that sounds good. But usually what you want to do, especially if you're just starting coding, you want to just hard code the easiest way, the easiest answer, and start hard coding it. If you then think you see a pattern, you can move right into uh, abstracting the common elements. But uh, yeah, rather than sort of hard coding every single one of them and having to go back and change them all, as soon as you see a pattern, then you can maybe flip to something more efficient. But before you see that pattern, it's good just to make it easy on yourself. So I'm going to now squiggle the, or not squiggle, animate the second one here, number one. So this is the whole controls of the second index one point. Now we don't want to animate it to 60, but rather we want to animate it to zero. It will already be at a Y of 60. And we can spend the same time and do that. So we save that. Yeah, dryer here. Cool. Uh, heart. I think it's I think it looks fine. It looks like it has a bump, a weird bump, but that's just because we're not animating this one as well. So uh, in, indeed, can I get that now? Indeed, those things are animating. So now we're on to the next one and the next one. OK, so we can start looking at um, a way to make it so that we don't have to copy and paste all this stuff and have all this long code. So first of all, we would probably do a loop through all of our control points. Now, there is not a container specifically for the control points or an array specifically for the control points. So we can't zim loop that, but we can loop zim loop the points objects, these guys, so the squiggles points objects. And the squiggles points objects is an array, so we can't go squiggle points object dot loop. Kind of wish we could, but this is an array, and we decided not to um, put the loop method on a traditional JavaScript array. In general, it's not a good good policy or practice to. Uh, append methods. I don't think anyway. I, I mean, I don't care. I'm kind of a hippie anarchist, you know, whatever. Hey, <laughs> but um, I've heard say that we should leave those guys alone. <laughs> okay, so I left them alone, or Zim left them alone. In other words, there is no loop method of the points objects. However, when it comes to containers, uh, Zim containers, which extend CreateJS containers, I did say, yeah, all right, let's put a loop method on a container. So if we were looping through a container, you can say the container dot loop. So we're left with using the loop function in Zim. So we have a bunch of functions. Loop is one of them. Do you want to see that? Oh, are you excited? Uh, in the documentation, if we go up to the top here, dink. Oh no, did I really do that? No, I didn't. Okay, good. Uh, and type in loop and hit enter. The first one right here, oh, is methods. <laughs> I don't know why uh, we went to methods, but if I hit go again, it goes to, oh, right, that's right. We move. No, that's, that is wrong. I, I must have selected. Let's try that again. Okay, so here's the first one. That's what I was expecting to arrive at. I think I forgot or didn't realize it was so um, 
so uh, up top here and probably put my cursor down in here and do the search. So now I'm going to put my cursor here and do the search for loop. <laughs> still, still open this one. It must just be something in my JavaScript. That's weird. See, this loop that I found, uh, you would think that the search would have come across the first loop, but uh, this loop seems to have opened up uh, the second loop, which is the loop method. And if I hit go again, there's another loop provided for us that is the loop function inside of code. Things like shuffle. Again, I did not add a shuffle method to the array, so you can't just say, hey, my array dot shuffle. Might have been nice if they could, but they didn't. And a random function. And here's the general loop function. So this loop works for three different things. You can loop through a number, through, loop through an array, and loop through an object, literal. Whereas the other loop right here does four things. <laughs> it can Actually, maybe I should get rid of these ones, but I, I sort of thought that you'd still want to know about those. Really, this method is only passing in uh, on the container. So if you were to pass a container in for an object, then it loops, but you can use it as a method. I should probably adjust this. Yeah, do you want to see my procedure for adjusting? Um, oh, yes, you say, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Procedure for ad adjusting is to go in, find the updates. It's a U. Where's the U here? U. Oh, that's not even. Must not even be that. Okay. Zim is getting so big that I can't even tell the main <laughs> Zim documents from certain directories in Zim. Uh, updates, templates, 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 updates. Here they are. So uh, there's an update.txt, which I keep track of updates. So here are all the updates that are planned for Windows, or that have been done on Windows 7. No, Windows 7. Woohoo! We're working on Windows 7. All the updates uh, for Zim 7. And then here's a bunch of to-dos. And on the to-do, I will add um, change. What was it? Loop docs um, for method to not include loop function <laughs> functionality. <laughs> nice. Uh, <clears throat> lovely. I think I'll remember what, what that means. And then I save that up and, and close it. And eventually that will make its way into the updates.html and keep you updated or <laughs> keep me updated keep all of us updated so why did i just put a loop there oh right i had did i have something yeah i do I have something in a cut and paste how's that so we want to use the loop function to loop through the squiggle points objects and each time we do we are given yeah. all right it will call a function for us here's the callback function and it will pass us what's inside. So this would be a point. It will also give us i, which we may or may not need. We probably will need. If we're doing all, if we're alternating something, it helps to have i. Then we can use the modulus, the percent sign to to go, uh, you know, to get two things. We say i percent two equals zero. Then it will do something else. It'll do something else. And that will keep on toggling back and forth in our loop. So uh, what we usually do when we see that there's things in common, and we would have had six of those, is we copy one of them and put them in the loop. Or however we're abstracting, whether we're abstracting and putting in a function, or abstracting and putting into a class. Here we're abstracting and we're putting it into a loop. So we've got one of the hard-coded ones here. One thing that will change is, um, we're given the point each time, so we do not have to ask for that. We would just say point. At. So the first time it loops, it gets the first point. So it's already got the first point, and now we're asking for the zero element of that first point. Uh, how about we do this point array? It might make it easier on us, like so. See what I mean? So if we recall what the squiggle looked like, where did I put what? Oh, here. Uh, each time in our loop, when we loop through the point objects, we're given this one. And the next time we loop, we're given that one. So that's what point array is, that. And then point array is that. 
So points array of zero, or point array of zero is the control in that, and that's what we're animating. Except we're not always animating it to 60. So all the rest of this stuff will be the same, and it's great, but the first time we want to animate it to 60, the next time we want to animate it to zero, the next time we animate, want to animate it to 60, etc. So uh, what we can do is embed right in here what's called the ternary operator, if you want, and that's just like a little if statement. It's like saying, hey, if i is divisible by 2 evenly, then we're going to do this. Else, if i is not divisible by 2 evenly, then we're going to do that. So that looks like this. We put the condition first, which is i um, percent, which is our modulus, 2. So that means, is the remainder of i divided by 2 uh, double equal to 0? So there's our, our condition. And then we put a question mark. And this is what it does if that condition is true. And here's what it does if that condition is false after the colon. So that's the ternary operator. One thing here, another thing there, and another thing there. That's three things. Ter ternary <laughs> means three <laughs> of three. <laughs> so here's our condition. Some people, and I used to, put round brackets around that condition, just sort of I'm used to it, but you don't need to, so I no longer do that anymore. You just have to look at that and go, oh my goodness, really? Uh -huh. uh, if you want, you can separate that out so you can see it a little bit better. Right. So as we're as we're looping, the first time we're either going to pick sixty or zero. Now, truthfully, let's see. I divided by two if it's equal to zero. So what have we got? When i is zero, that will be true. So therefore, it'll do sixty uh, because zero divided by two is considered the remainder of zero. When this is one, it's not zero anymore. It's considered a remainder of 1. When it's 2, it's a remainder of 0. When it's 3, it's a remainder of 1. When it's etc. etc. So that should be that. And then we don't need this one. And we don't need the rest of them. And that will be that will loop for however many points we have, just alternating the points. We'll see it work. So we save this up and come back to our explore and refresh. Ooh, nice. Uh, if I can click that, <laughs> I can't. There. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Can you see that all right? Uh, can we scale that? Mm, squiggle dot center and dot ska. How about three times as big? Not only that, but I don't want to start with my controls. So let's just uh, pop on out to the docs there for squiggle. We're almost done. I know this has been a long one, hasn't it? And take a look in the docs. Sorry, that's pretty small for you. Uh, the docs, color, thing. has it always been this small? <laughs> My apologies. Here I am showing you very tiny doc stuff. Handle size, lock controls, show controls. So we want to start off with show controls false. And if you want, you can lock the controls so that we can't... Uh, I can't remember what, which one that is. Toggle. No, we have to turn toggle false. So you can show controls false and toggle false. And that would mean that they could never see the controls. If you show controls false, it just means they can't see them. But if they click on them, then they toggle. The lock controls is uh, you can show the controls, but they're locked. You can't actually drag them. Uh, could be for educational purposes, for example. So we want show controls false here. So I don't mind if people will use them, but I just don't want to see them to start. Show controls colon false. And we save that up and we pop in here. And we refresh. There. And we get rid of that. We F11. Ooh. Nice. And we can slow that down or speed it up uh, for the animation. Now, if you want to actually accelerate it, so to make it go faster and slower, then Zim Animate is locked in to a certain animation time, which means you <laughs> may have to do this more of with, with like with a coding value. You could then animate a certain amount. 
and then you could, uh, based on that, you could uh, move things up and down at different frequencies. All of this, by the way, could be done with a shape and then actually code equations in here and update the equation each time. And if it's a sine like this or a sine or a cosine wave, it's actually pretty easy to do. Does this even, yeah, it's how, or is that just a standing wave? It's not even moving. Yeah, this is a standing wave anyway. So it's not quite how you would see a sine or a cosine go, which would move through this as well. So uh, to do that, I think you would have to move towards uh, animating in a shape, or not animating per se. Uh, it is animating, but not using Zim animate. Uh, changing the, the actual line uh, based on uh, an equation. Okay, so that's it for this Zim Explore. Oh, how much fun this has been! And I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. I should always say have a great night. Uh, when we're exploring, it just seems like you've got the stars there. Ciao.